Hi, this is David Odell with Odell Complete Concrete. Today we're going to be filling in an old planter bed that was just, you know, a maintenance nightmare. Basically, you're looking at the area there with the black rock in it. And it's got like three rose bushes and it's just, you know, a lot of rock. So you're going to get weeds, dirt, constant cleaning and maintenance. So we're going to fill it in with concrete. We're going to leave three small 16-inch um, diameter um, circular um planter spots to put some uh, pots in and we're going to reroute the water so we have water in each uh, of the three planter circles and we're going to have drains in each one also so we have to reroute a couple things that are already in here so basically uh, we're going to dig everything out it's pretty muddy in here as you can see because uh, a lot you know it's been raining a lot in this area and then it looks like the lawn kind of drains into the planter. It looks like that upper deck kind of drains into the planter. And then, of course, potentially overwatering um, could cause a lot of that water in there. And also, your soil conditions. This particular type of soil doesn't drain that well, it kind of just holds it. Anyway, we've located the sprinkler, existing sprinkler lines that are in here. And we're gonna cap a couple of them off. I'm gonna put a, a little bit of threading compound on there, and then I'm just gonna thread these uh, caps on there. And before I put any concrete in, uh, I'm gonna water test it. You know that's important. You always want to water test everything uh, before you put concrete over it, because what you don't want is to water uh, turn the water on later after the concrete's already hardened. It means you got to tear it out again. Anyway, here's your three circular planters I'm going to do. Uh, they're 16 inch. I just got some stuff over at uh, Lowe's Hardware. Which is really nice and it bends real easy. Got this in the garden section. So I put a few screws in here. I just kind of bent it around until I got 16 inches. Put a couple screws in it, and now it's ready to go. All I gotta do now is drop those where I want, put concrete around them. Anyway, you can see I've rerouted the sprinklers to each planter, new planter location. What's gonna happen is a potted plant's gonna go in these locations, and it's gonna route the uh, water up through the bottom of the planter with a, a little bubbler at the top. Then also there'll be a drain in gravel at the bottom of each one of these holes. So if any overwatering of the uh, potted plant, the water will just go into the drain, which goes out to the street. It's the perfect setup for this. This is ideal for a potted plant, zero maintenance. nice thing about this system is if you do have like a lot of people will put potted plants on a concrete slab um, or on some brick and you get over water and then you get hard water deposits from the over over watering on the concrete and you get staining well this particular system here with the drain in each one of these holes you you won't have that problem So what we're doing is uh, I have a mixer out in the front of this house and I'm using a 4500 PSI um, sack mix and this happens to be the Blue Hawk brand which is the best one I've ever used. Uh, Quick Crete I don't care for. This Blue Hawk uh, is a big big difference if you really want if you want to put it. I love that you know Quick Crete if I want to do post holes or something but if you want to put a finish on it, then I have to go to the Blue Hawk. So I got, uh, I put one rebar on both sides because you notice we got some narrow spots on both sides of the planter, which is good crack points. So I ran a piece of 3 8 on both sides all the way through, and that will hold this thing together, cracks or no cracks. You can see how dry I put this in there. I actually got to tamp it down to um, get the moisture to come up. 
I'm doing that with my hand float. There is jitterbugs or tamps you may call them, but uh, I just pound it down with my hand float and that seems to be fine. Anyway, I'm checking this with a level as I go across with my uh, straight edge, my rod board. I put a level on that, make sure I got slope out so it doesn't hold water on the surface. Anyway, all the other concrete around here is a uh, rock salt finish. And I didn't have any rock salt, you know, on me. So what I did was uh, I just, I found a stick. And I got about three different size sticks or branches I broke off for some bushes. And I just started poking holes in the top. And then it all matches all the other concrete without using the rock salt. So that's a little something you can do, you know, if you don't have rock salt and you're, and you're doing a small area, you can just start poking holes in it. So this is just a one day job here. It's very difficult to um, edge a 16 inch rate, a 16 inch diameter circle. They have some other types of edgers that are only about one inch wide that makes it a little bit easier to edge this tight of a radius but I don't happen to have one I mean I could have modified one of my six inch or wide edgers and, and cut it down with my uh, grinder but uh, I just say you know what I'm just gonna uh, make this work so that's what I did so here's the technique I got a stick here and we're just uh, poking holes in it now we got what we call a, a rock salt finish And that will match the other concrete all, all around this. See, he's got two sticks in his hands right there. Each one is a different size. And then if you flip the stick over, you have another, another size. So it's really random. Anyway, uh, this is how you do it. Thanks for watching my video. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you. Bye.